welcome to another episode. Today we're going to take a look at my post-production workflow with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, loading it into Premiere, uh, what I do with it, how I build a sequence, uh, all the resolution questions. I've had several people asking a few questions on how do you do 6K. Um, so we're going to basically go step by step and whether you're beginner or you're, you're somewhat intermediate, this may have some useful to tools for you. So let's start off with media. So let's say I've done my shoot. I, I have all the footage. I'm going to grab my hard drive um, that I have all the footage on from the Blackmagic. If you haven't seen a previous episode, I use the Samsung T5 drives um, and I have two of them. Uh, also, I found this really nice case. Check out all the links below. All the products that I use, I'll link to those so you can see exactly what I use and have tested so that you know that it's it's usable, it will work and work well. So I have two Samsung T5 drives. I have a one terabyte and a two terabyte. So I drop all my footage straight from the T5 onto my GTEC RAID drive. I have a 12 terabyte RAID drive and it has a faster read write speed specifically for Blackmagic RAW files. Now, if I'm using stuff like a Sony that doesn't require as fast of a drive, I have the, the 10 terabyte GTEC G drive, which is also a great drive. I'll put links to both of those below, but I'm really happy with the read and write speed of the RAID drive that I get, as well as 12 terabytes. That way you have plenty of space for the Blackmagic RAW files that you're gonna be shooting with if you're shooting B-RAW because they really do take up a lot of space. So I've already dropped them in here from my external drive, from, from the T5 drive. So I'm gonna open up the drive and where I've dropped them. We're gonna take a look at this previous footage, maybe some older footage as well, but the previous footage from the, from the Sand Dunes National Park. So let's go ahead and start a new Premiere project. So what you're gonna see here is I'm going to create a new project from scratch. I'm gonna show you my import procedure as well as my how to build my sequences and then the tools that I use to get that final look uh, on my videos, as well as a few little tricks that I use to enhance those videos and to add a little bit of a, an optical flair to the videos. So let's start a new project. And typically these settings are usually perfectly fine. Um, we'll name this BMP, BMPCC Premiere Workflow. So here's our blank project, and you'll see there's absolutely nothing here. Um, what I like to do, so in Premiere, you can import your video files directly within Premiere because there's, um, there's a media browser, and here you can go in and select, and then you select the folder, the subfolder, and you can import from there. I don't typically like to do that. But one note, if you're shooting with red raw footage, you need to do this. If you drag and drop your red raw footage, it does something and it doesn't quite load it properly. So for red raw footage, you need to use this import window. I don't like to do that. I like to just drag and drop. So I'm gonna create a new bin. Let's call it Sand Dunes 6K. So this is where I'm going to drag and drop my 6K footage. And I'll open a new finder window. BMPCC, I'll just select all and I'll drag and drop. I'm actually gonna create a new bin and import some older footage as well real quick. Probably do some uh, from Washington State, Winchester Mountain. So we'll say Winchester Mountain 6K. And I'll go in and I'll find that footage. BMPCC, select all, drag and drop. And it really only takes a few seconds. And I, the reason I like to do it this way is because I can work a lot faster in the browser in Finder than, than I can inside of Premiere's browser. And you have to go click down and it's just a little bit more cumbersome. So I like to drag and drop from Finder. Okay, so now I've got two folders with lots of 6K footage, several different frame rates, um, and several different interpret rates. Um, if you're unfamiliar with interpreting the footage, uh, that'll be in a different video. But I do have a note, someone commented um, on my Blackmagic Menus video about the shortcut keys offering you the ability to change frame rates. I did 
try that. And what happened was it actually sped up that footage. So I had it set at 50 frames with the shortcut to 24 frames. Um, when your camera is set in 50 frames and you, sh you shortcut it to 24 and you, you switch that over, it interprets the footage as double speed as though you're going to use it for slow motion. It didn't actually change the frame rate to 24 frames. So what I had to do is actually go into Premiere and slow those down to 50 to 48%. But let's go ahead and create our sequence. So I'm gonna hit Apple N, Command N, to create a new sequence. Now you're gonna see a large menu of options. Um, and pick your option. There's a lot of good formats in there, good sequence settings in here. I went ahead and made my own and I'll show you how to change those. But I went ahead, we're gonna open up JV6K Cine and we're gonna call this BMPCC Premiere. That's the name of my sequence that will show up here. Um, again, I had JV6K Cine. If you want to create your own preset, super easy, you go to settings, you change all your resolutions, your frame rate, whatever you want it to be. You can change your audio, audio sample rating. And then you go down here and you hit save preset and allows you to rename your preset. And then it'll show up in this sequence presets uh, window tab. And so you just go down and you select which one you want. So we're gonna do JV6K Cine. And if you're curious what those res that resolution is, uh, a few of you were asking, how do you do a 6K uh, sequence? Um, this one, because it's a two one ratio, I have it set to, or sorry, close to a two one. I can't remember one four one. Um, close to a two one. Anyway, I have my dimensions at sixty one forty four by twenty five sixty. Oh, twelve. So it's twelve by five is the ratio on this sequence. Um, you can, of course, do the Blackmagic native six K sequence setting. Blackmagic six K native is thirty one forty four by thirty four fifty six. For if you just want to drag it in and it'll be perfect to the dimensions. That's the 6K native from Blackmagic 6K camera. I'm doing Cine because I like the kind of a wider anamorphic look. Okay, so we have our sequence now. It opened up the, our, our timeline where we can insert video tracks and audio tracks. And I'm gonna go in and something you're gonna notice is that the video is not necessarily going to fit the dimensions. So let's just go ahead and pick a clip. I'm gonna pick an, a nice looking clip. Here we go. This one is at 50 frames, so I'm going to want to slow this down if I wanna do it. Uh, no. This clip is at 50 frames, so when I drop it into my 24 frame sequence, it will automatically drop the frames, you know, whatever their algorithm is. For something like 50 frames, it's probably just every second frame or so, you know but it'll automatically interpret it to 24 frames for you. So let's go ahead and drop this in. If I want, I can just use my shortcut keys to drop it in. It'll bring in the clip with audio. So there's my 6K sequence with this clip fully loaded in there. Now, of course, cut it however you want, edit it however you want, resize it however you want. Um, when I say that this video doesn't fit the dimensions, you'll see, so my original clip, is the Blackmagic, is, is the 6K native resolution. When I transfer it in here, you'll see it's the same width, but the height dimensions change and it crops, you know, bottom and top. So what you wanna do is click on this clip, go to your effects controls up here in the left side and adjust your clip to where you want it to be inside your sequence. And you'll, you'll see it right here in your preview window where it's gonna fit. So I have, a 6K clip in my sequence. Let's throw a few more in just, just to have them there. Let's find some really good clips. Something like me walking in, the camera's panning, and you get some nice lens flares there. I'm gonna just drag it in and not use, not use the audio, because I really don't want the audio for these. And there's a wall between us, so you can't even hear it. Um, now, I wanna zoom in on this section of my sequence. I can just hit command and hold the plus. It enlarges the video. If you hit option plus, it enlarges your audio track. Really useful. As well, you hit this, uh, whatever this is, the backslash button and this straight line button. 
what it'll do is zoom into all that is in your sequence. So if your sequence is goes past, you know, way down here, hit that button, it'll bring it all in there or it'll expand and you can do that. That's a nice shortcut to zoom in or zoom out to the big picture of your of your sequence. So I've got two raw clips in here. Love the Blackmagic Raw files. They're just awesome and I really like the color science that they have. Um, so now let's go in and actually change the Blackmagic Raw settings. So we shot at our certain settings. I'll put them up here as well. Uh, I put them in a previous video, but here are the settings that I use. To change our Blackmagic Raw settings, we're going to clip, click on the clip, go back to Effect Controls again. This is where all of your clip alterations are going to happen for anything, pretty much. Um, and here on the master track, inside the effects controls window, is your Blackmagic RAW settings. You can also apply things within this master window, such as Lumetri, um, any, any amount of color grading, you can apply it to the master. And what that does is it applies it to every time you use that specific clip in the sequence. So if I use the first half here and the second half later in the video, it will apply anything you have on the master to that later clip. Not so if you use just the regular, the regular here uh, effects control general window right here. This is specific to the, se the, the segment that you have right there. It won't alter any future clips. And then of course you can remove any of those settings just by deleting it. But let's go ahead and change our Blackmagic RAW settings. And you're gonna change it from camera metadata to clip. Okay, so now you're gonna see all of your Blackmagic RAW settings just like on the camera. Um, and you can select certain different things uh, to be exactly as you shot them or you can of course change them. I'm gonna go in here, change, um, I'm gonna leave my Blackmagic Design color space and gamma and I'm gonna adjust those manually. What I usually start with, I just go right down the line. I'll start with white balance. I actually really like the white balance, but here's your white balance. And if you want a slider, just expand it there, crank up your white balance. That's really warm. We don't want that. Um, I'm happy with this white balance because this is golden hour. Let's keep going. Tint is fine. Exposure looks great. Um, if I'm going to adjust my exposure, I usually start with my ISO. And within the two, the dual native ISO of the Blackmagic, you have one to a thousand with 400 being the Blackmagic native uh, for that first bracket. And the second is one is 1250 to, I can't remember, 6400 with 3200 being native for that bracket. So I like this ISO, but there's your ISO settings. If you'd like to change them, you can do so. And I might actually end up changing as I change the black levels and the contrast, et cetera. So let's keep going. What I like to do is bump up the saturation to about 1.3 because, okay, not 0.13, 1.3, because Premiere for some reason on export removes some saturation and contrast. It drives me crazy. If there's a setting you guys know about that I don't, please tell me because it's just driving me nuts. Every time I go to export, I have to crank up the contrast and the saturation. So I do that per clip and color per clip because it's just a lot more control that way instead of adding an adjustment later, lay, layer later and mass applying everything, which I do with Film Convert and you'll see that in a minute, but let's keep going. I'll bump up my contrast because like I said, Premiere's export. So it looks very high contrast and very saturated, but it compensates for Premiere's exporting. Um, and then depending on how happy I am with my, my shadows and my highlights already. I will adjust my midpoint. Of course, if you go up, it's gonna bring everything up. Go down, it's gonna bring everything down, but that makes it to a more manageable level so that your blacks are not completely just blacked out and your whites are not completely washed out. Um, it makes it a manageable level. And again, this is raw, so it's non-destructive and I'm happy with everything else. So that's how I um, adjust my B-RAW settings. What's nice about Blackmagic RAW is you can actually go in and copy your Blackmagic RAW settings, Apple C, and paste them to another shot. Go into your master, click on Blackmagic RAW, Apple V, you have your settings copied and pasted. Now this shot is a little bit different. I may want to adjust a few things. 
mostly okay, but you know, if you need to, you can batch edit just like that and get a pretty good coloring right off the bat. Now I've got everything in my sequence, you know, say I've got all my clips laid out. What I'm gonna do now, what I like to do for color grading is create a new item called an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is an overlay that you can apply anything to. It's just like another video file, add anything you want to it, um, but you're gonna put it over top of all your clips. So this is something you would wanna do with Lumetri. Um, for example, on Premiere's exporting issues with color and contrast, I apply an added layer of Lumetri to bump up the contrast and the saturation so that it just applies that to everything as well as my film convert layer. And you're gonna see so it'll bring up this window to say, what are the dimensions? It automatically fills in the dimensions for the sequence you have open. So I'm just gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna drop this in. Usually I put it two layers up just so that way I have space, you know, if I wanna drag any other elements into my video over top of the actual video files. Here's where I'm going to add film convert, and I'm gonna to go to my effects. Now you ha do have all these, um, these workspaces up here. I don't like to use them because it just is kind of clunky and it takes a minute for it to load um, and then get back to the editing window. I just go down here to effects. It's, it's instant. J I have my favorite folder set up. Drop film convert right on this layer and you're gonna see the difference here and just the nice color grade it gives. And then within film convert, of course, you can change your film settings. And I like to use the Kodak Portra or the Fuji Vel Velvia and really happy with those. It gives it, a, it gives it just a nice, warm film look. And you see it more on export. You can't really see it well on the screen recording, but it just gives it this really nice film grain look. And right now I have my preview set at full, which is why it's probably not playing. Like I said, get a fast hard drive so that it can actually load your footage. There we go. So at a quarter, at quarter quality, you're gonna be able to load your footage and it looks great. Really happy with this. So now I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my project window, my project window browser down here in the corner, and I'm creating a new bin called VFX. And this is where I'm gonna drop all my visual effects. Some things that I like to do a lot are um, some subtle uh, lens flares or some subtle dust or fog kind of effects. And you'll see how I do those. Now on a 6K sequence, all my most of my effects are 4K, which means I'm going to have to upscale them. But to be honest, I've never run into a problem where I'm unhappy with the quality of how those upscaled files actually look. I'm really pleased with how they work. Um, and most of them are captured with really good cameras, like a lot of the lens distortions elements captured with RED cameras or RE cameras. So they're quality videos that you can feel free to upscale without worrying about quality, especially to a, um, a 6K is really not that big of a step. So I'm gonna go in and find my VFX. I have a, an entire folder with stock footage and, and stock effects that I pull, pull from. I'm gonna go down here to, let's go, let's add dust. Let's add snow particles. Sure, just these two. Drop them and drag and drop them into my VFX. For some reason, it didn't bring the dust in. So we'll go, go ahead and open this folder. And you'll see I have a lot of different options. Let's just go ahead and dust 18, sure. So I'm gonna drag this right over top of my video. Now you'll see it up here. I'm gonna disable my film convert layer because it use a, uses a lot of CPU. So let's just disable that temporarily until we export. You'll see this is my 4K dust layer. Now it's not filling the 6K frame. So we'll go up to effects controls again and we'll rescale this up. I don't know what it is. I think it's one, nope, way more. Let's see, let's just slide it 161, 160, 160. 160. Now it's still a solid video. So all you have to do for a black background video is change the blend mode to screen and instantly takes the black out and your elements are right there. We'll blow this up and you'll see the dust coming in there. Now this 
could be done better. You know, I would mask it over this and, and over this. That way you just see dust coming in, in the, this area as though it's floating with the clouds. Um, but that's essentially what you do. And it's, it is floating the wrong way as well. So I would probably rotate this by 180 degrees so that it's floating that way. Um, so that's just some elements that you can use, that some tricks that you can do to enhance your videos a little bit. And you want to use them, you know, of course, tastefully. Some people don't do it very tastefully. Try and do it tastefully. But just w some ways that you can add a flare to your video. Now I'm going to re-enable uh, the Film Convert layer. I'm going to go to the end of my footage and I'm going to set my out point just by hitting O. And that sets my in and my out point. And I'm going to hit Apple M which is going to send, bring up my export window. Um, so in this specific situation where I have an odd shaped uh, resolution, you know, this isn't a standard 6144 by 3456 resolution. Um, it's, a, it's a very strange dimension. So what I want to do is I'm gonna set, I just go to the YouTube 21, uh, 4K Ultra HD setting and then I hit match source. So what this is gonna do is, it's actually gonna set the bitrate settings for a 4K video. You'll see all these settings. I bump this up to 60, uh, because again, that, this is a 4K preset, and if you do it at 4K bitrate, you're gonna get a loss of quality. So I bump that up to 60, and then I hit match source for the dimensions. This will automatically adjust to your sequence dimensions. You'll see it change, 6144 by 2560, and then, I just, I put it in the queue for media encoder or I just hit export. And it should be done in a couple of minutes. Film Convert definitely adds a significant amount of time to your export and your compression. Uh, so take that into account. And if you have a powerful machine, you should have no issues. But on you know a smaller laptop, you might run into a longer export time. So keep that in mind. Something, you know, if I don't need Film Convert, I don't add it. But a lot of the times, almost all the time, I use it because I really like how it looks. But that's a basic look at my post-production workflow and the tools that I use to edit my videos and make them look more cinematic. Thank you for watching. Again, check out the links below and I will see you next time.